Hello there and welcome to this new Blender tutorial where we're going to make the kunai from Valorant. So without any further ado, let's hop straight into it. By importing our reference image, which I'm going to be linking down in the description below, pressing Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and rotation, bringing it down with G and Z. And next up I'm going to be pressing Shift A and import a plane. Now what I'm going to do is press G, Y and adjust it on top of a graphic view so that I can actually see what I am doing and Control R to add an edge loop, right click to snap it back into the center and now I can delete the vertices on the side. Now if this is too fast for you, you can feel free to just slow the video down but uh, this is not a beginner tutorial at all so you should at least be on the uh, start of intermediate in order to follow this because I'm expecting you to know some of the shortcuts because I will not be explaining everything step by step. So now after aligning everything to the center or aligning the, uh, the center of the reference to our main image or our um, model we can actually go ahead and start modeling this to the end. So what I suggest you do is not use edge loops like this but instead you use the knife tool so press K and now you can actually cut into your mesh. I'm going to do it like this, just following the shapes on the image. You can do this with any knife really, uh, whether you want to make a karambit or anything else like a bush knife, it should all work. So just make sure that when you cut, you actually have the same number of vertices on this side as you do on this side, so that you can just join them in the end with J and you have quads. Uh, now having quads is not really that important, not always at least, um, especially when having areas like this where it's actually very flat, where we're actually going to use a triangle, but exactly here uh, where you have a surface or a region of high contrast uh, where it just transitions from one shape into another, you should really be having quads in order to get the best subdivision possible. So now what I'm going to do is press K again and just cut out this diamond shape like so and I'm just going to join this this and I'm going to be utilizing two cuts one here and one here to get the curvature going Oops. and I'm going to join it like this this again creates a quad here but as I told you I will be having a triangle here which is not that hindersome at all so now I'm going to cut right alongside here because it's straight, I only need one cut. And I'm going to use two cuts in order to get the big shape here. Now you might be thinking that two cuts is really too little, but I think it's just enough. Like so. One on the top to get the tapering and one here to set the flow because right here it's actually really, really uh, even going almost straight up and then the curvature starts to set in at this point. So having this slightly down from it should actually be good enough. So now every knife needs an edge so we might just delete everything that we do not need now and start placing in our cuts for the edges like this. Again making sure to not use more cuts on one side than the other so we can just join this here this here and here we have a triangle and uh, that is really not that good so we're just going to select this one then this one press M and then at last now we can reposition this to be straight with the reference image again something along these lines and now we will be placing in a support for this here now you can see this is all an M gun which we can resolve later but for now I'm just going to knife right here or cut right here and just follow along right through here that should be fine and what that allows us to do is just join this here and we're going to have quads here quads here and those are quads here anyway so now we can actually get started on shaping this so for that I would suggest you select these three here all of this and all of this not selecting this one so I'm going to bring it down like so 
And I'm going to deselect this and bring this down even more, just a little bit. So now I'm going to be selecting this vertex here. You can also select this, but I like this one more. And I'm going to press Shift S, cursor to select it, go into edit mode again, F3, and then we can look for set origin, origin to 3D cursor. That places our 3D cursor right on this point here, which allows us to just mirror this alongside it. So mirror, 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 here we go, along the X and Z axis. And now you can see that we get our kunai shape going here. Now what we can do is actually uh, give this here some more shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude all of the black parts here, or the gray parts here. Um, and I'm going to do that by just selecting all of them. So I'm going to select everything like this. Alt E, extrude faces along the normals. And now in vertex mode, I'm going to merge this like so. I'm just pressing Shift and R after having done the operation once. You can just delete this here and that should be fine. Now next up I'm going to delete this face. And that should be good. Next up, after we enable the mirroring again, we can see that we have a gap now. Uh, we can just simply resolve that by enabling clipping and selecting these two, bringing them down until it starts to clip again and that should be fine. Now this is looking great and we have the general shape of the kunai ready and we can just give this a subdivision of three levels by pressing Control and 3 and that should look like this. Now it's really smoothed out and uh, we will be resolving that. We could use edge loops like this but I don't think that's really efficient uh, or maybe it is efficient uh, but it's not really that easy to work with and it doesn't allow us to adjust everything later. So what I suggest you do is you use creases. Now you can use them by just simply selecting an edge like this and like this, this one as well, and this and this. I will be selecting all of these here and using the mean crease right here. If you don't see the panel, press N, go to item, in edit mode with the selected edge, you can crease this up until it says one and you can see it sharpens up everything. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this here and make sure you get everything in the center. You get this one here uh, where it's going down, not forgetting about this. You get the inner ones, these ones that are going outwards as well, the blade and that should be it. Also don't forget this here. And that will leave you with this. It looks really nice and don't forget about this one as well. Now that is more or less exactly what I want. I think it looks really good. Now I'm kind of speeding this up. You could give this a little bit more of an interesting shape by just moving some stuff around. And I suggest you try and do that. But uh, with more time comes better results. And I'm just trying to get this done here fairly quickly so that you don't have to be feeling like I wasted your time. Now when we say, uh, shape this smooth here, you can see that we get some smoothing issues or shading issues. And that gets, res uh, that gets resolved after we add more subdivision. But really what you should be trying to do is uh, try and give this another edge loop. So I'm just going to cut through here. Just like this. And sometimes it will not let you cut uh, to the direction that you want. So it says that you need to cut right here. As you can see, then you can just simply do what it says. And then just GG edge slide until you get to the point that you want. 
Okay. Now just connect these here with J. And that should be doing most of it. As you can see now the shading issue is mostly gone, but it just got a little bit elongated. And you can really get rid of it by utilizing a tactical triangle. So just place one in here and that will get rid of most of the issue and it will be converted into quads as soon as you apply a subdivision of at least one. So that is looking really neat and I'm liking it. Okay, now you could really play with the thickness and everything. I think this could be a little bit lower. Whoops, not H but G. But really, you need to find out for yourself what works and what doesn't. So I suggest you play around with this a little bit more than I am doing right now. You saw in the beginning, the beginning what you can make with this. Uh, but that should be about it. Okay, now for the next step, I'm going to go with Curse of the World Origin. Import a cylinder, bring it down, scale it down. And try to align it with the reference again. Now... With the onion skinning or uh, the x-ray view it's called you can select the sides on the bottom and the top then press i for insert f3 and search for bridge edge loops that will create a bridge along the edge loops yeah okay now we can just scale this down until it fits our reference all G to reset the location so that we get them in one plane. Try and align it again. And now you could at any point in time go ahead and say I don't like this here, I want it to be further out and you would get the shape that you wanted. And that is really the beauty of having this as low poly as it is because at any given point you could just change the shape of the whole thing. So now, I'm going to bring this up again. And as you can see, we have a few faces that are aligning pretty good, uh, aligning pretty well with the reference image. Of course, it's not a perfect match, but uh, you could, of course, tweak it, add it in a cylinder with more sides, and that should do the trick, really. Make sure that the cylinder is actually bigger than your knife tip. And just extrude it in. S, Y, 0 to make it flat, S, X, and scale it out. Now, you should only be scaling this along the X axis so that you don't actually distort the mesh. One about here, and one about here. Okay, we're not going to need this here anymore, so I can delete the reference. I'm going to take all of this, scale it in quite a bunch. And this here seems to be clipping. So I'm going to be moving it down. As well as this. Okay. Now I'm going to be taking this here and this here and inserting it twice. Once like this, once like this. That is going to help us after we subdivide it to get this uh, sharp edge here. And I'm going to bevel this here out as well. Okay, now that we got that, whoops, I did not mean to move this. I'm going to take this and this, scale it in quite a bunch. I'm going to scale this here in as well, just a little bit, like so. And now we can take all of this and all of this, same on the other side, and scale it along the Z axis. Now that is fine. You can also take this and this, this and this, this and this, scale it along the X axis like so, add in a little bevel, Scale it up. Okay. 
now without of these edges. It might be a little tedious, but just give it some time. Okay, now I'm going to be taking this edge and extending my selection up until here. Same with this. Scale it along the Z. Like so. And subdivide it with about two iterations. You can give this here a little bit more definition by adding in an edge loop like this and shade it smooth. And there you go. So, I'm going to scale this all down a bit, apply the scale, should be fine. And yeah, that should be it. That looks nice. And uh, yeah, what I suggest you do is apply the mirror after you are done with this. Uh, you could, of course, UV unwrap this. I would suggest you do that before you apply the mirroring. Um, but yeah, just apply it and apply at least three levels of subdivision right now so that you can subdivide this here just take this this control j to join it all into one mesh and then you can give this a subdivision of two without having that much topology on this side where you don't need it but you still have the five levels of subdivision um, on the knife tip so yeah i'm just going to give this a quick material uh, but basically that is it for the tutorial uh, as you can see, we got the shape ready. I'm just going to give it the basic material. You saw in the beginning what you can make with this. If you textured this accordingly, I'm just going to give it a noise texture for right now. Flip, plug it in here, enable the node wrangler add-on, go to edit, preferences, uh, add-ons. It's going to take a while to load. Search for node wrangler, enable the checkbox, and then you should be able to control shift click on this call color ramp you can play with this here make it a little bit more detailed increase the roughness now you can see that it should be looking fairly good increase the roughness on here not that much okay something like this and when we preview it it looks like it's brushed. I don't know how well it's showing in the uh, in the video. Maybe if I increase the contrast a little bit, you can see the brushing lines. Could of course also plug this into the bump and make this really small, but I like it like this. And for the knife, you can just go ahead and select the face loops. Whoops, like this. up until you get to a point where you're confident to just take out the circle select tool with C and select the rest like this. That should do the trick. And now you can just go ahead and give this a new material, click assign and do it like this, apply the metallic and I'm going to copy this setup, control C, just paste it in here, control V, oop, and oops, that is in the wrong spot, just in roughness. And there you go. So I hope you like this tutorial and I will be seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.